The M1 Abrams is an American third-generation main battle tank produced by the United States. It is named after General Creighton Abrams, former Army Chief of Staff and Commander of U.S. Military forces in the Vietnam War from 1968 to 1972. Highly mobile, designed for modern armored ground warfare, the M1 is well armed and heavily armored. Notable features include the use of a powerful multi fuel turbine engine, the adoption of sophisticated composite armor, and separate ammunition storage in a blowout compartment for crew safety. Weighing nearly 68 short tons, it is one of the heaviest main battle tanks in service. The M1 Abrams entered U.S. service in 1980, replacing the M60 tank. It served for over a decade alongside the improved M60A3, which had entered service in 1978. The M1 remains the principal main battle tank of the United States Army and Marine Corps, and the armies of Egypt, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, Australia and Iraq. Three main versions of the M1 Abrams have been deployed, the M1, M1A1, and M1A2, incorporating improved armament, protection and electronics. These improvements and other upgrades to in-service tanks have allowed this long-serving vehicle to remain in frontline service. In addition, development for the improved M1A3 version has been known since 2009. History the M1 Abrams was developed during the Cold War as a successor to the cancelled MBT-70. The M1 Abrams contract went to Chrysler Defense and was the first vehicle to adopt Chobham armor. Adaptations before the Persian Gulf War gave the vehicle better firepower and NBC protection. Being vastly superior to Iraqi tanks, very few M1 tanks were hit by enemy fire. Upgrades after the war improved the tank's weapon sights and fire control unit. The invasion of Iraq in 2003 destroyed Iraq's military. The subsequent insurgency exposed the tank's vulnerability to rocket-propelled grenades and mines. These problems were partially rectified with the Tusk modification. The Marine Corps sent a company of M1A1 Abrams to Afghanistan in late 2010. Development The first attempt to replace the aging M60 tank was the MBT-70, developed in partnership with West Germany in the 1960s. The MBT-70 had advanced features such as a height-adjustable air suspension and a very low-profile chassis with the driver located in the turret. The MBT-70 ultimately proved to be too heavy, complex, and expensive. As a result of the imminent failure of this project, the U.S. Army introduced the XM-803, using some technologies from the MBT-70 but removing some of the more troublesome features. This succeeded only in producing an expensive system with capabilities similar to the M-60. Congress cancelled the MBT-70 in November and XM-803 December 1971, and redistributed the funds to the new XM-815. Later renamed the XM-1 Abrams after General Creighton Abrams. Prototypes were delivered in 1976 by Chrysler Defense and General Motors armed with the license-built version of the 105mm Royal Ordnance L7 gun, along with the Leopard 2 for comparison. The turbine-powered Chrysler Defense design was selected for development as the M1. Chrysler had significant experience designing turbine-powered land vehicles going back to the 1950s. In March 1982, General Dynamics Land Systems Division purchased Chrysler Defense, after Chrysler built over 1,000 M1s. A total of 3,273 M1 Abrams were produced 1979-85 to and first entered U.S. Army service in 1980. Production at the government-owned, GDLS-operated Lima Army Tank Plant in Lima, Ohio was joined by vehicles built at the Detroit Arsenal Tank Plant in Warren, Michigan from 1982 to 1996. The M1 was armed with the license-built version of the 105mm Royal Ordnance L7 gun. 
An improved model called the M1 IP was produced briefly in 1984 and contained small upgrades. The M1 IP models were used in the Canadian Army Trophy NATO tank gunnery competition in 1985 and 1987. About 5,000 M1A1 Abrams were produced from 1986 to 92 and featured the M256 120mm smoothbore cannon developed by Rheinmetallag of Germany for the Leopard 2, improved armor, and a CBRN protection system. Production of M1 and M1A1 tanks totaled some 9,000 tanks at a cost of approximately $4.3 million per unit. By 1999, costs for the tank were upwards of $5 million a vehicle. In 1990, Project on Government Oversight in a report criticized the M1's high costs and low fuel efficiency in comparison with other tanks of similar power and effectiveness such as the Leopard 2. The report was based on data from U.S. Army sources and the Congressional Record. As the Abrams entered service in the 1980s, they operated alongside M60A3 within the United States military, and with other NATO tanks in numerous Cold War exercises. These exercises usually took place in Western Europe, especially West Germany, but also in some other countries, including South Korea. The exercises were aimed at countering Soviet forces. However, by January 1991 the Berlin Wall had fallen and the Abrams was instead deployed in the Middle East. Gulf War The Abrams remained untested in combat until the Persian Gulf War in 1991, during Operation Desert Storm. A total of 1,848 M1A1S were deployed to Saudi Arabia to participate in the liberation of Kuwait. The M1A1 was superior to Iraq's Soviet-era T-55 and T-62 tanks, as well as T-72 versions imported from the Soviet Union and Poland. The existence of license-produced T-72 has been disputed. According to Polish officials, none were finished prior to the Iraqi G tank plant being destroyed in 1991. The T-72S, like most Soviet export designs, lacked nine vision systems and then modern rangefinders, though they did have some night fighting tanks with their older active infrared systems or floodlights. A total of 23 M1A1S were damaged or destroyed during the war. Of the nine Abrams destroyed, seven were destroyed by friendly fire, and two were purposely destroyed to prevent capture after being damaged. Some others took minor combat damage, with little effect on their operational readiness. Very few M1 tanks were hit by enemy fire, which resulted in no fatalities and only a handful of wounded. The M1A1 was capable of making kills at ranges in excess of 2,500 meters. This range was crucial in combat against previous generation tanks of Soviet design in Desert Storm, as the effective range of the main gun in the Soviet Iraqi tanks was less than 2,000 meters. This meant Abrams tanks could hit Iraqi tanks before the enemy got in range, a decisive advantage in this kind of combat. In friendly fire incidents, the front armor and four-side turret armor survived direct armor-piercing fin stabilized discarding sabot hits from other M1A1S. This was not the case for the side armor of the hull and the rear armor of the turret, as both areas were penetrated on at least two occasions by friendly depleted uranium ammunition during the Battle of Norfolk. During operations Desert Shield and Desert Storm some M1 IP and M1A1S were modified locally in theater by modification work orders with additional rolled homogeneous armor plating welded on the turret front. The M1 can be equipped with mine plow and mine roller attachments. Upgrades The M1A2 was a further improvement of the M1A1 with a commander's independent thermal viewer, weapon station, position navigation equipment, and a full set of controls and displays linked by a digital data bus. These upgrades also provided the M1A2 with an improved fire control system. The M1A2 system enhancement package added digital maps, FBCB2 capabilities 
and an improved cooling system to compensate for heat generated by the additional computer systems. The M1A2 September also serves as the basis for the M104 Wolverine Heavy Assault Bridge. The M1A2 SEPV2 added common remotely operated weapon station support, color displays, better interfaces, a new operating system, better front and side armor, and an upgraded transmission for better durability. Further upgrades included depleted uranium armor for all variants, a system overhaul that returns all A1S to light new condition, a digital enhancement package for the A1, and a commonality program to standardize parts between the U.S. Army and the Marine Corps. Iraq War further combat was seen during 2003 when U.S. Forces invaded Iraq and deposed Ba'athist Iraqi leader Saddam and Hussein in the Iraq War's Operation Iraqi Freedom. As of March 2005, approximately 80 Abrams tanks were forced out of action by enemy attacks. The most lopsided achievement of the M1A1S was the destruction of 7072S in a point-blank skirmish near Mahmoudia, about 18 miles south of Baghdad, with no losses for the American side. In addition to the Abrams is already heavy armament. Some crews were also issued M136A T4 shoulder-fired anti-tank weapons under the assumption that they might have to engage heavy armor in tight urban areas where the main gun could not be brought to bear. Following lessons learned in Desert Storm, the Abrams and many other U.S. combat vehicles used in the conflict were fitted with combat identification panels to reduce friendly fire incidents. Some Abrams were also fitted with a secondary storage bin on the back of the existing bustle rack on the rear of the turret to enable the crew to carry more supplies and personal belongings. Several Abrams that were irrecoverable due to loss of mobility or other circumstances were destroyed by friendly forces, usually by other Abrams. To prevent their capture, some Abrams were disabled by Iraqi infantrymen in ambushes during the invasion. Some troops employed short-range anti-tank rockets and fired at the tracks, rear and top. Other tanks were put out of action by engine fires when flammable fuel stored externally in turret racks was hit by small arms fire and spilled into the engine compartment. A majority of Abrams damaged in post-invasion Iraq were by improvised explosive devices. By December 2006 more than 530 Abrams tanks had been shipped back to the U.S. for repair. Due to the vulnerability of tanks in urban combat, the Tank Urban Survival Kit was issued to some M1 Abrams. It added protection in the rear and side of the tank to improve fighting ability in urban environments. In May 2008 it was reported that an American M1 tank had also been damaged by an RPG-29, which uses a tandem charge high-explosive anti-tank warhead to penetrate explosive reactive armor as well as composite armor behind it. In Iraq, the U.S. considered the RPG-29 threat to American armor high and refused to allow the newly formed Iraqi army to buy it fearing that it would fall into the insurgents' hands. Between 2010 and 2012 the U.S. supplied 140 refurbished M1A1 Abrams tanks to Iraq. In mid-2014, the Abrams saw action when the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant launched the June 2014 Northern Iraq Offensive. Some Iraqi Army M1 Abrams were captured or destroyed by ISIL forces. ISIL's ability to effectively maintain and employ American armor in the long term is questionable. War in Afghanistan tanks may have limited utility in Afghanistan due to the mountainous terrain. Although Canada and Denmark have deployed Leopard 1 and 2 MBTs that have been specially modified to operate in the relatively flat and arid conditions of southwestern Afghanistan, in late 2010, at the request of Regional Command Southwest, the U.S. 
Marine Corps deployed a small detachment of 14 M1A1 Abrams from Delta Company, 1st Tank Battalion, 1st Marine Division, to southern Afghanistan in support of operations in Helmand and Kandahar provinces. Yemen after the start of the Saudi Arabian operations in Yemen during the 2015 Yemeni civil war, two M1A2 MBTs were deployed near the Saudi-Yemeni border. Future the tracked M8 armored gun system was conceived as a possible supplement for the Abrams in U.S. service for low-intensity conflict in the early 1990s. Prototypes were made but the program was cancelled. The eight-wheeled M1128 mobile gun system was designed to supplement the Abrams in U.S. service for low-intensity conflict. It has been introduced into service and serves with striker brigades and airborne units. The U.S. Army's Future Combat Systems XM1202 mounted combat system was to replace the Abrams in U.S service and was in development when funding for the program was cut from the Dodds budget. Engineering change proposal 1 is a two-part upgrade process. ECP-1A adds space, weight, and entertainment and power improvements and active protection against improvised explosive devices. Nine ECP-1A prototypes have been produced as of October 2014. ECP-1B, which will begin development in 2015, may include sensor upgrades and the convergence of several tank round capabilities into a multi-purpose round. The M1A3 Abrams was in the early design period with the U.S. Army in 2009. At that time, the service was seeking a lighter tank version with the same protection as current versions. It aimed to build prototypes by 2014 and begin fielding the first combat-ready M1A3S by 2017. Recent program documents suggest that the U.S. Army plans to start the research and development for the M1A3 in 2020. The M1A2 September Tusk Abrams and a modernized M1 Abrams were included in the ground combat vehicle analysis of alternatives. Vehicles included in the AOA were determined to be inferior to the planned GCV. The U.S. Army Vice Chief of Staff Gen. Peter Chiarelli commended the M1 Abrams program and recommended a similar approach for the GCV program. The ground combat vehicle family of vehicles was the planned successor to the M1 as well as many other U.S. Army vehicles. However, the Army anticipates that the remaining M1A1 fleet will remain in U.S. service until at least 2021, and the M1A2 to be on 2050. Production shut down the U.S. Army planned to end production at the Lima Army tank plant from 2013 to 2016 in an effort to save over $1 billion. It would be restarted in 2017 to upgrade existing tanks. General Dynamics Land Systems, which operates the factory, opposed the move, arguing that suspension of operations would increase long-term costs and reduce flexibility. Specifically, GDLS estimated that closing the plant would cost $380 million and restarting production would cost $1.3 billion. If passed a bill in the U.S., Senate from the first session of the 112th Congress would allocate $272 million in funds toward the plant to allow it to continue regular operations. Through 2013, by August 2013, Congress had allocated $181 million for buying parts and upgrading Abrams systems to mitigate industrial base risks and sustain development in production capability. Congress and General Dynamics were criticized for redirecting money to keep production lines open and accused of forcing the Army to buy tanks it didn't need. General Dynamics asserted that a four-year shutdown would cost $1.10 minus $1.6 billion to reopen the line. Depending on the length of the shutdown, whether machinery would be kept operating, and whether the plant's components would be completely removed, they contended that the move was to upgrade Army National Guard units to expand a pure fleet and maintain production of identified irreplaceable 
subcomponents, a prolonged shutdown could cause their makers to lose their ability to produce them and foreign tank sales were not guaranteed to keep production lines open. Even though money is being spent to protect the industrial base, some feel those strategic choices should not be made by members of Congress, especially those with the facilities in the district. There is still risk of production gaps even with production extended through 2015, with funds awarded before recapitalization is needed. Budgetary pressures may push planned new upgrades for the Abrams from 2017 to 2019. In December 2014, Congress again allocated $120 million, against the wishes of the Army for Abrams upgrades including improving gas mileage by integrating an auxiliary power unit to decrease idle time fuel consumption and upgrading the tank sites and sensors.